thank you that you have communicated to us and we pray now that you would give us understanding as we look into your word and that uh, we would have the wisdom to be able to apply these thoughts to our own lives and the willing hearts, Lord, to not be rebellious, not to pass it off to somebody else, but to see this as a word for each one of us individually. Well, thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. What does a good Christian look like? You know, if you stop and think about it, you know, you might have a picture in your mind of a guy with, a, you know, nice clothes, some loafers on, nice conservative hat. And uh, the, however that picture looks for you, or maybe for the ladies, it's a long dress with a high neckline and a <laughs> modest appearance. Uh, what, what does a good Christian look like? Well, the Apostle Paul here is laying out for us uh, the marks of an ambassador for Christ, what a good Christian should look like. And we broke it up into two parts. And last time, uh, at the beginning of this chapter, we noted that, first of all, uh, a good Christian should have a sense of urgency, that today is the day of salvation, and how can they hear without a preacher? And so we need to have a sense of urgency in communicating the gospel in a sense of urgency in reaching out and sharing the love of God with people around us. And then we also noted in verse 3 that, that a, a good Christian, an ambassador for Christ, should be concerned about the reputation that he projects for Christ and for himself. And so uh, he says there in verse 3 that we give no offense in anything, that our ministry may not be blamed. And then we also noted that, uh, that a, a good Christian uh, has humility. Uh, a good Christian sees himself as a minister, as a servant, and he commended himself. He says, we commend ourselves as ministers of God. And so we need to have that same mark on us, a mark of humility as we move forward that other people can see. Uh, but, but remember I said that we're going to break it up, and so we, we covered three last week. We're going to finish up with four. There are about 20 different marks that are here in this text, and we could take one a week and go for six months on this, but by the time we finish, the pews would be empty. So I'm going to try and, uh, and, and just uh, group some things together, and, and we'll finish up with these four things that I think are, are important for us to consider. The, the first one I want you to see is in verse 5, and that is that an ambassador for Christ has a willingness to suffer. Paul certainly knew what, it, what he was talking about from first-hand experience that an ambassador for Christ is willing to suffer. Uh, if you go back to Acts chapter 14, you see in Acts chapter 14 how the Apostle Paul went from Lystra, the Derby, and Iconium, and those towns, and he was stoned, and he was beaten, and he was left for dead, and yet he got up, and he kept on ticking, and he kept on preaching, and he kept on sharing the good news of Jesus Christ. He had a willingness to suffer, and that becomes an example for you and I that we need to have that same willingness to suffer. Unfortunately, as soon as the going gets a little tough, we back down. Am I right about that? Yeah. As soon as, as it gets a little hard, uh, then, then, then we want to we wanna make it easy for ourselves again. And Paul told young Timothy in 2 Timothy 1.8, he says, Share with me in these sufferings. In other words, I'm out there getting stoned for the gospel. I'm out there getting beaten up. Uh, to, to share God's love with people around us. And, and I want you, young Timothy, to share with me in this. I want you to know what it means and what it feels like to suffer along with me. But the problem for many of us is that we value comfort and ease more than we value the gospel. We need to value the gospel more than we value comfort. And if there was like a little scale in your heart, if you put in your heart this scale and, and which one values heavier, comfort or the gospel, 
Well, I guess for some of us, it would depend on which night it is and what's on TV. <laughs> but but we we you know it starts to starts to tilt on the side of comfort and ease. And Paul is challenging us, I believe, by his own example and by the example of Christ. That, that we need to value the gospel. We need to value our role as ambassadors for Christ. We need to value the job that we have of sharing the gospel with those around us. And so uh, we, need to, we need to set aside the agenda that we have to make life as comfortable and as easy as possible in our own experience. A mark of a good ambassador for Christ is his willingness to suffer, when his willingness to suffer outweighs his desire for comfort. And so uh, that's the first mark. It doesn't matter how nice your suit looks. It doesn't matter how big your Bible is. It doesn't matter how nice a brim you wear to church uh, or, or how high your dress line could be up over your forehead. The fact of the matter is, you're not looking like a good Christian if you're not demonstrating a willingness to suffer for Christ. I said it. Everybody can run out of here. The second thing I want you to see is not only is there a willingness to suffer for Christ, but if you take a look at verse 6, you'll see that an ambassador for Christ has a desire to learn and to grow. I like this. He says, by purity, by knowledge, by long-suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Spirit, by sincere love, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left. And so by these things, we demonstrate that we are ambassadors for Christ. And it is, none of us have arrived there. Let's be clear about that. You might believe that you're this wonderful Christian, but none of us have arrived. And all of us are on this journey, and what we need to be able to do is to, is to desire to push further, to grow, to learn more and more, to demonstrate these marks even more. As the, the Apostle Paul, uh, he himself was not even satisfied with where he was. He says that he continued to press toward the mark of the high calling of God. And certainly you and I should not be satisfied with where we are in our own Christian lives. I believe that one of the marks of a good ambassador for Christ is that you are not satisfied with where you are and you want to look more like Jesus. That, that you're not satisfied with your knowledge of the word, but you want to learn more of the word. Amen. You're not satisfied by your level of love. You want to demonstrate more love. Yes. You're not satisfied with where you are in your walk with God. You want to push further. I remember it was a number of weeks ago when I, uh, when I said, how many of you think you're pretty good people? And uh, somebody, I guess they weren't really thinking, man. <laughs> the hand up the congregation. But, but if you were honest with yourself, you know, uh, probably if you weren't so scared, more of you would have stuck your hands up. Because unfortunately, here in America, one of the, the dilemmas of our Christianity is that we are way too satisfied with where we are. We are very complacent about where we are in our walk with God. We're satisfied with our purity. We're satisfied with our knowledge. So why come out to Bible study? We're satisfied with our long suffering. We feel no great need to, to suffer any longer for, for Christ or demonstrate any more patience. We're satisfied with our kindness. We're satisfied with the level of the Spirit of God working in us. We're just simply okay. See you next Sunday. Just get it done in a half an hour, hour and a half, and we're, we're fine. Am I right about it? I believe that we need a level of dissatisfaction. And one of the marks of a good Christian is that there is this desire to learn and grow. You know, we had an interesting discussion on uh, Wednesday night um, 
there was a question that came up about, about um, you know, this idea of us being complete in Christ. And uh, I was thinking about that afterward, and, uh, and, and I think a good analogy, you know, we are complete in the same way that, uh, that a newborn baby is complete as they're born. You know, a parent rejoices in the fact that, oh, he's got all ten fingers and all ten toes. He's got two arms and two legs. And the fact of the matter is, that baby is born and a healthy baby is complete. That healthy baby is perfect. You don't have to transplant any adult organs into that baby when they grow up. That healthy baby grows and develops to become that mature and able and capable person. And in the same way, we are born as babes in Christ. When the Spirit of God comes in as, as babes, we have everything that we need. We talked last week about the fact that you don't need any more Jesus. Jesus needs more of us. Remember we said that? And we have all the spirit that we need. We have all the power that we need. We have uh, every piece that, that God requires for us. We are complete in him. But just like a little babe, we've got to continue to grow. We've got to continue to develop. We should never be satisfied until we reach that level of maturity that God would have us to reach. And so uh, we're born again as new babes in Christ. But from day one, we have all that we need. We are complete in Christ with the instruction and the encouragement uh, that he gives to us. And so while we never fully attain the stature of Christ, we have everything that we need to progress in purity, in knowledge, in patience, in kindness, in the power of the Holy Spirit, in love, in the word of truth, with the armor of righteousness, whether in honor or dishonor, whether people are talking about you with an evil report or a good report, whether you become famous or stay unknown, the fact is that we are equipped for every good work, and so we need to never be satisfied until we're using all the tools that have been given to us to represent Christ. Look at verse 7. In verse 7, we find reference to the power of God that's given to us. And I'd like to say that an ambassador for Christ depends on God for success. If you want to know a mark of a good Christian, a good ambassador for Christ, it is someone who depends on God for success. And John 15, 5, we looked at that briefly, at least referred to it last week, uh, gives us that metaphor of a branch and the vine and, and how the branch is totally dependent on the vine. In the same way, we as branches are totally dependent on Christ. We're dependent on the power of God flowing through us. And it's sort of like the power of gasoline in a car. You know, the power of gasoline can have explosive power or it can have slow burn power that can move a car 300 miles. Yeah, you can take a, a can of gasoline and light a match and throw it in there and boom, have a big explosion, a big display of power. And, and every now and again, the power of God is seen in some explosive power going all the way back to the day of Pentecost. And, and periodically, God throws a little gasoline on a situation and well, demonstrates some explosive power yeah. and some miracles that, that take place. But over church history, for the 2,000 years of church history, much more kingdom building has been done through the slow burn of God's power through his people. Amen. Now, what do I mean by that? The slow burn of God's power is, is as God, through the Holy Spirit, works through us and demonstrates, produces in us the fruit of the Spirit, and the gifts of the Spirit. And we've talked about the fruit of the Spirit is Galatians uh, 5. It says that love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faithfulness, those things are that what the Spirit of God produces in us that other people can see. 
And I believe that this list here, some of the marks of an ambassador, uh, many of them are taken right out of the fruit of the Spirit, right out of the things that the Spirit of God produces in us. Are you with me? But then there is the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And the gifts of the Spirit of God are those, and I'll give you this definition before, if you, if you haven't heard it, write it down. It's a good Tony Hart definition of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The gifts of the Spirit of God are the supernatural abilities given to us by the Holy Spirit that enable us to edify the body of Christ. Do I have to repeat that? It's the, it's the supernatural gifts of the Spirit of God, the supernatural abilities that the Spirit of God gives us that enable us to edify the body of Christ. And so when we talk about spiritual gifts, we're not talking about talents. We're not talking about natural talents. We're talking about supernatural abilities given to us by the Spirit of God. Now, I always say this, and take a note of this, that because God is sovereign, and he knew you from before the foundations of the world, he knew who you, how he was going to make you, how he was going to design you, there is naturally then a correlation oftentimes between your natural abilities that God has given you as sovereign God and where he wants you to serve. And so oftentimes his supernatural gifting in your life will be in line with those natural abilities. But not all the time. Sometimes God wants you to work and will gift you and enable you to work in an area that there is no seemingly natural gifting in. And so oftentimes there are people that are called into ministry where uh, they feel a little uncomfortable because there just doesn't seem to be a natural fit. It doesn't go along with their natural abilities. But, but, but God gives us this supernatural ability to be a blessing to edify the body of Christ. And it is as we allow the Spirit of God to go to work in our lives that that ability is slow burned through us and we become a blessing to people around us. Amen. Are you hearing me? And so rather than always looking for some explosive, miraculous thing to take place in our lives, maybe what we need to do is to say to the Spirit of God, Lord, every day of my life, I want to depend on you. Amen. Every day of my life, I want to see the Spirit of God manifest himself in me, in love. Joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, goodness. Every day of my life, I want to see that slow burn of God developing his life in me. And then I also want to see God use me as he gifts me and enables me to be a blessing to other people. Whether it's in the area where I'm naturally fit or in the area where he wants to use me in some special way. And I believe that a mark of a true Christian, a mark of a good ambassador for Christ, is that on that daily basis, we depend on God for success. As we step into the world to represent Christ, we do it in complete dependence on Him. We spend so much every day. Time, money, we use up, we waste so much. We spend time and money every day until it's all gone. Precious resources, powerful resources. What if you what if you reinvested your time into prayer, your resources into support to help us plant churches, prepare leaders, and proclaim the gospel? What if you became a prayer fellowship partner? GOGF has been planting churches, preparing leaders, and proclaiming the gospel throughout the world since 1961. 14 churches on the eastern seaboard producing weekly radio broadcasts that reach around the globe. We have ministry training in India, Africa, and the Caribbean. Partner with us. Partner with God. Invest in expanding and supporting His kingdom worldwide. Become a prayer fellowship partner. You have the time and resources to make a difference. And then the fourth thing I want you to see is in verses 8 to 10. And, and I, I want you to, to, to see, he says that, that, that we are ministers, and we commend ourselves as ministers to God, 
by the word of God, by power, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and yet not killed. And what's he saying? He's saying there that a mark of an ambassador for Christ is when you can walk with God and you can demonstrate those qualities in every situation. When you can represent Christ well in every situation. When things are going well and when things are not going well. When you're under stress and when things are easy. When you're lying out on the beach in the sun and when you're sweating in the factory and the pressure is on you. When you're in your family and all, and all the complications of family life come down on you as well as when you're out on the, when you're by yourself walking in the park. In every circumstance and in every situation, one of the marks of an ambassador for Christ is that you can represent Christ well in every situation. Now what does that mean? That means I can't blame my circumstance for my bad, my bad attitude. I can't blame the situation I'm in for losing my temper. I can't point the finger to other people for me, you know, uh, starting to spout out some bad language. I've got to be able to represent Christ well in every situation. Are you with me? Yeah. And, and, and that's one of the marks of an ambassador. You take him out of the easy situation and you put him in a hard situation and he just exudes Christ. You put, take him out of the light and put him in darkness, and the darkness lights up. And he's able to represent Christ well in every situation. Boy, what a challenge for you and I. On the job, with the people that you don't like. Come on now. That guy, he just flashed, his picture just flashed into your mind. <laughs> And you've got to be able to represent Christ in vastly different circumstances. And so verse 4 is key. It says that in all things, <coughs> we commend ourselves as ministers of God. And so all of our excuses are thrown out the window. Uh, excuses like, I know I need to pray more, but I can't get up early because I have a busy day and need my rest. Or I, I know that I should be in church to fellowship and learn, but Sunday is my only free day. Or I, I know that I'm not using my gifts for the Lord, but my children are so busy with sports and activities, maybe when they get older. Or, or I know that I should be giving more to the Lord's work, but I'm trying to get that vacation paid for. The reality is that we all have our own unique hurdles we all have our own unique challenges that we have to overcome. An ambassador for Christ is able to represent Christ well in every one of those situations. On good days and bad days, when there's encouragement or only discouragement, under stress as well as with help. And so the question is that I want to leave you with is what do you look like? Do you have a willingness to suffer for Christ? Is there in your heart a desire to grow and to learn? Is there a dependence daily on, the, on God for success? In every situation, are you able to represent Christ well through all the ups and downs of life? I'm going to ask you to bow your head and close your eyes. <laughs> and I've said a lot, but I believe that the Spirit of God is able to take it, speak to your heart. And I just wonder, as you've been listening, if the Spirit of God is speaking to you about one or more of these areas that you need to apply in your own life, if he can stir up some dissatisfaction in you, even right now, then I'm going to ask you to pray about that and ask God to become 
more real to you, that you can be the kind of ambassador that represents him well in every situation. Would you do it? And I might be talking to somebody here, and you're not even sure that you're on your way to heaven. You're not sure that you're a child of God. You're not sure about your relationship with God. You're not sure that your sins are forgiven. You don't know what it means to be an ambassador for Christ. And I just want to tell you that God can reveal himself to you. And today can be the turning point in your life if you commit yourself to him. Just thank him for who he is. Acknowledge your need for him. The fact that you're a sinner, that you need to, his forgiveness. Ask him to come into your life, to be the Lord and master of your life. And commit yourself to following him from this day forward. You can do that right now. Would you do it? And Christians, we all need areas in our lives where we need to, to push forward toward that mark. To be more like Christ. Ask God to help you. As you have that word with the Lord, I just want to join you in prayer. And I'll raise hands and say, Pastor Tony, just pray for me. Say one like that. Yes. Amen. Hands all over the place. Wow. Yes. Amen. I see those hands. The Lord is speaking to you. Let's pray together, whatever that need might be. Any others last call? Just slip a hand up. I'll include you. And Marco, let's stand together for that word of prayer. <clears throat> and Lord, again, we confess that we've fallen short. We have not been the people that you've called us to be. We have not been good examples of ambassadors for Christ. We have not represented you well in the world around us. Forgive us. Lord, help us to be more like Jesus. Help us by the power of God working in us to experience that slow burn of God's power gifting us and using us and changing us. Lord, for those areas where we need your help, we commit them into your hands now. Help us to remain dissatisfied. Help us to never become complacent with where we are. But Lord, may the world see Jesus through us. For each one to raise their hands, Lord, you know exactly what their individual needs are. You know exactly uh, what they stand in need of. Lord, meet that need. Answer that prayer. Conform us. And we'll give you the praise in Jesus' name.